Chanton's gonna come up. He's our VP of cybersecurity for NeoVera. So he's gonna be doing a presentation as well as some of the guys from WatchGuard. And then we've got a panel that will be sitting up there taking some questions. Thank you. How many of you knew that uh, Neovera does cybersecurity? Just show of hands. Okay, so after today, you guys know that they, we do cybersecurity. Uh, how many of you heard of, have heard of WatchGuard before? Okay, good, good. Yeah, it's one of the top you know, providers in the, in the world for UTMs, uh, Unified Threat Management Tools. Okay, so with that, so as you guys walked in, there's a few books, and it's, um, there's a few books that I've asked all the folks in Neovera to read, one around Spam Nation, you guys heard of Krebs, Krebs Online, Krebs on Security. It's actually very enlightening. There's you know, Spam Nation, there's a book called At War, and then there's a book about, uh, that's factual about how the United States, how we attacked uh, Iran and went after their nuclear uh, arsenal and their centrifuges with uh, what we call today command and control, our ransomware, malware components, right? So that's the old Stuxnet's, Stuxnet uh, attack. Has anyone read any of those books before? Yeah, they're very well worth reading. Two, two of them are very entertaining. The other one's very dry, uh, but very factual, almost like a documentary, if you will. So, but very, you have to be really in depth on it. But the, the point is that we all know the internet, everyone's connected on the internet today. Um, we've been connected for many years. Uh, back when I used to work for the number one e-commerce company in the world, uh, back in the late 90s, the internet, I know the CEO who coined the term e-commerce, it was one of the late, uh, biggest EDI, electronic data interchange companies in the world. They were like, the internet, wow, what's that? We're always gonna rely on our value-added networks or our vans. Well, we all know that's not reality, right? Everyone's using the internet all the time today. Um, it wasn't built for what we're using it for today, and it's not a secure environment. It wasn't meant to be that. It was meant for redundancy, it was meant for things to go, things take out certain parts of the network, and it fails over to other parts of the network uh, by the military. And Al Gore did not invent the internet, as we all know as well. All right, so, so anyway, the, uh, all the transactions we do every day, basically, we have all got a responsibility to secure it, personally as well as professionally. And if you look at uh, the Threatscape today, the landscape, it's real simple, right? We've got, the attacks are becoming more organized, the volume is increasing dramatically, they're getting more sophisticated. And this is something that, uh, one thing I didn't want to do is, when Johan goes later on, you're going to see a tie to each one of these bullet points here as well, um, and specific examples to this, right? So we're not repeating between our presentations, uh, but you're, this, is, this is happening all the time. So what are the, all the security folks concerned about and executives? Fixing things is broken today, or the remediation piece. Uh, people talk about just securing the, uh, at the at the edge of the firewall, but you need to go ahead and secure, make sure the firewalls uh, communicate to your mobile devices as well as to your laptops and secure Wi-Fi because we're all interconnected, right? Wired or wireless. And then for, for instance, you know, we're all using encryption today, right? Because there's a, a um, there's a, has anyone ever heard the t word Tempest before? Okay, so back in the government days, right? Um, there's uh, there's a, there's the NSA came out with a Tempest program and what it is is every electronic device emanates signals, and anyone can pick those off, right? So as we're emanating signals, communicating, you want to encrypt it from your mobile device to your laptop, through the firewall, to someone else you're going to do. And that's for good, right, encryption, but can also be used for bad things. Encrypting your hard drives like Loki, CryptoLocker, uh, and all the, all the variants. So you need to be able to, look, you need to, be able to de decrypt the encryption as well. But the point there is that it's all going to be connected. The other point is that there is a shortage of security expertise out there. The next generation of folks that are coming up, right, they're coming out of college today. It's the responsibility of folks like myself that went through and got trained by the folks that were very good security professionals, different government agencies, et cetera, to train the younger generation that's coming up of how to actually secure environments, Stop using Instagram, Snapchat, LinkedIn, and uh, <clears throat> Facebook, all the other social media outlets for, you know, use those, you know, be smart. 
how you do it. But what's happening is we all know all those are linking over to our business life as well. So now they're becoming intermixed. And the one point that make as well on the limited correlation across all the various security technologies is, is a problem, right? So that's also where uh, to try to do this as a, a large organization becomes very expensive. You move that down to the mid-market, to small, medium-sized businesses, businesses that are, you know, 1,000 people or less, becomes very, very difficult as well to do that. So you need to look at the tools and the people, the process, the people, and the technology of how you go ahead and you correlate all the security events across your firewalls, your routers, your switches, your servers, your mobile devices, your laptops, and your desktops. And the buzzwords, right, everyone, you know, AWS, Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, um, cloud providers like Neovera, cloud providers like Verizon, uh, keep on going down the list, right? Everyone's moving tools to SaaS and the cloud, and everything's becoming heavily virtualized. And again, you know, servers are everywhere. Our devices are everywhere, laptops, iPads, Androids, et cetera. And after uh, Snowden, that's what they're talking, they talk about multiple companies, talk about the Snowden effect, right? Where you have that encryption used to be for good, right? Now everyone's encrypting from your desktop. So when you go from your desktop, just an example, if you're going to encrypt and you're going to go ahead and get your email, and everything's encrypted between your email server down to your desktop and through all your devices, if you're not scanning that um, encrypted channel, you don't know what's coming through it. So the problem is it's encrypted. Your antivirus software, your firewalls, everything in between cannot see what's going on in that encrypted channel. So you need to decrypt. You need to be able to unlock that, scan it for viruses, scan it for malware, scan it, scan it for advanced persistent threats, APTs. By the way, you're going to hear APT a lot today, and you'll hear that a lot on the news. If you think of weapons of mass destruction in the physical world, WMDs, that's what APTs are in the cyber world. And there's a stockpiling of all the nation states with APTs and, and attackers. So advanced persistent threats, those are the zero-day attacks that people are coming at us now from outside the United States. So the big, the, the, real quick, on this slide, you gotta be able to decrypt the traffic, scan it, know what's going on, all the way down to the endpoint. That's a very, very important. If you're not doing that today, you're at risk. Second thing is with APTs, for example, advanced persistent threat, everyone's at risk for that. There was a very small, small car dealership here, not in Maryland, but in Virginia, that got hit. One dealership got hit. They contacted the local uh, Fairfax County Police. They couldn't help them. They contacted the FBI. They couldn't help them. The reason they couldn't help them is because it was coming from outside the United States. So today, there are sites, and you guys can Google all this all the time. Just don't go to these websites, right? <laughs> is that there's ransomware as a service today. And what's happening is outside the United States, you can go and you can pay, you know, through Bitcoins, et cetera, to get viruses made for you for free, basically, and then you can distribute them and attack folks. So people are doing that. That's what people are doing today. So that's the, the cyber terrorism that folks are using today. And it's real. All good security organizations, they talk about layers of defense. Right, so we believe not, it's not just about the firewall front, but it's also about all the different layers. So you get the firewall, traditional firewalls that people think about, like, like network-based firewalls. Traditional, they just check packet filters going back and forth, been around 30, 30 plus years, easy, right? And routers, doing all that. Hey, that's all good for checking, you know, people going in and out the door. Then what you need to start looking at is intrusion prevention systems and the difference between, you guys have all heard of a IPS, that acronym IPS, or IDS, differences in IPS stops the, stops the attack. The IDS potentially can just let it go through, just monitors, everything is going through, doesn't actually do anything with it, lets you, alerts you, notifies you of it. So you, you, know, you need to make sure you get an IPS. You also need to scan antiviruses and then also obviously the spam components. Okay? And then we get back down to um, two different things. One is, and they're related, uh, reputation type services. So there is a lot of bad malicious sites on the internet that you wouldn't go to just by typing in the URL, but 
when you go to certain sites, you may not know, you know, if you go to certain sites like Facebook, as an example, right, and you see, and I tell my wife this all the time, by the way, is that she goes on Facebook, right, all the pictures around Facebook on the bottom and around the side and say, oh, you may like this when you click here. Those aren't actually on Facebook. Those are some other site. And those are potentially malicious sites that people go into. So when, you know, the firewalls, like I have in my house, so personally protected, so I practice what I preach. Uh, firewalls at businesses, right, block those, con can block that content if you have the right filters in place. So when you get down to the last bullet on there, again, you hear this acronym APT. If you leave today, know that you need to, attack, you need to prevent against advanced persistent threat attacks, APT. APT is out there. Usually we'll go ahead and you get through a phishing email, a spear phishing email, uh, and you click on a link or you double click on an, an email attachment. Think about how easy it is. You're looking to hire folks at your company, right? Just like in Vera, we're hiring a lot right now, right? As we're growing, you get resumes in, you click on the resume, boom, it could be infected, right? That's one. You go ahead and you get, you get a wire, you know, the, the age old one that people still click on, right, Scott, is, oh, hey, Scott, can you wire this for me? Or did you, can you wire the money from account A to account B? Scott gets those and then we block them, right? Or the accounts payable folks get it, right? And it's coming, supposedly come from Scott and we block all that stuff, right? But everyone, I think, has seen those as well, right? So you need to look at those. So, but when you click on that, right, you can also make sure you block those sites. And so you need to make sure you do that, right? So um, again, APT, everyone's got, everyone knows after today, advanced persistent threat, but done my due diligence, right? Make sure that you guys know you need something. If you have whatever security vendor you have in place today, make sure, are you, do you help me prevent APTs? And the answer probably is no. And of course, we all know the big ticket, big ticket items, right? Um, of different attacks. This bubble chart just shows the, the, some of the major corporations that have been hit over the past few years and the dollar amounts, the records breached. And right here we had, uh, you know, the average cost for a record breach, you know, so like a record and a database. That's what I'm talking about, a database record. You know, it could be your Salesforce information. It could be, you know, financial account information, et cetera, but the average cost, and I'm sure that varies by vertical as well, uh, is $154. So you look at what the, the impact cost to Home Depot, Target, and eBay was. So it's interesting, you know, it, it used to be very difficult, right, to breach companies. It's a lot easier now, right? Um, electronically, to be able to send an email to somebody from the other side of the world and have them just think, it's sh sheer numbers, right? If I send a million emails out, I guarantee you somebody is gonna click on it. Send a thousand emails, someone's gonna click on it. Maybe if I send 10 emails, someone won't, but you send emails out, you get them going to a certain URL, oh, it looks pretty cool, let me click on this real funny picture, right, or this funny video. I click on it and I got gotcha. you. Okay, that's one. The other thing too, in, in the, uh, for a lot of security companies, uh, MSPs and MSSPs, right? So we're both, Mia Vera is both, uh, managed service provider, cloud service provider, as well as a security provider. Um, some of the new cloud you know, security providers, for instance, and I was talking about this with a gentleman beforehand, was they may run their security operations in a traditional office where you go up to the second or third floor of an office building, it's the glass doors, with it's got the motion sensor on the other side, and you just stick basically a piece of paper in it under the door and you open up the glass doors and you walk in and you go to their telephone closet and that's where their security servers are that they're running. Unlike someone that uh, Scott, who founded the company back in 2001, has made, you know, made a major investment. So in Neovera, we practice what we preach. You know, we're in a fully secure compound, a complex, right? That's, you know, fully gated, has guards, has biometric access. You have to show government IDs to even get in, has physical man traps, multiple biometric hand scans, et cetera to get in and key card access as well, just to get to our cages where everything runs, as well as to our operations center. So when you do talk to someone that says, hey, they want to do cybersecurity monitoring, cybersecurity management, ask them where their operations center is and what their DR plan is for their operations center as well. So, and now let me flip to what Neovera is with, um, like I was just saying, you know, Scott founded the company back in 2001. Uh, it's been, like you say, he's cut across multiple markets uh, since then, for the past 15 to 16 years, we're headquartered in Reston. Um, our data centers are in the Equinix facility. If you're familiar with Equinix, I think it's one of the largest providers in the world. 
Uh, we have three data centers in Ashburn, Virginia that are all redundant between each other, uh, as well as we have data centers in Jersey and San Jose, California. Just a, just a picture of some of our, of our clients, but all different markets. You can see financial services, manufacturing, uh, keep on going down the list, education, nonprofits. We have uh, you know, some very good strategic partnerships across our entire organization for infrastructure. You know, if we're making sure we have all the network covered, the operating systems covered, uh, storage covered, security covered. So let me talk a little bit about you know, what we do. We do cybersecurity management, we do cybersecurity monitoring. Management's inclusive of monitoring. Okay. So basically 24 by 7 by 365 security monitoring of as most basic as you want to super comprehensive. So you, we, we can just go out and watch the front door for you, whoever goes in and out your front door, so your firewall. We can go ahead and really go all the details of a next generation firewall or UTM as well. Uh, we can also monitor full th your full network and your distributed enterprise as well. So we can monitor everything. If you want to monitor every server in your network security wise, we can do that with all the logs coming back in. If you want to, if you want to log, excuse me, if you want to monitor all your mobile devices and your laptops, your desktops, and have all that security come back, that's, that can be done as well. So network, host, everything, full comprehensive. And what, um, what we saw the opportunity was that there's, uh, we're focused a lot on the mid-market uh, for cybersecurity. There's, you know, there's a lot of large organizations out there that focus on, I'll say, the, the Fortune 100, and that's where they're focused on. And then there's guys down, I'll say, at the very bottom that are just coming in the, in the area that don't have the expertise, the operational expertise, and that's where Neover's niche is, is right in the middle and understand the mid-market across all the verticals uh, for that. So the, the thing here is that the cost, if you actually want to try to run an operations center, the math is easy. It's going to be 1.2 to 1.4 million easy per year. That's conservative. It's probably, it could be a little bit higher depending on the resources uh, that you hire and the cost and the load factor you have for your benefits. But um, you can actually see what, literally what the cost is. You know, you, you got roughly 90 to 100K per person. You need 11 full-time people to do 24 by seven with holidays, people getting sick, people need taking leave. Um, you need to buy software and hardware for that as well. So the minimal cost for that, if you look at it, um, just put 350,000 in there. If you look at what it actually costs, it could be a lot more as well. So you can see that's, that's one thing. So if you look at that, that's uh, the cost, the expertise, if you're, if you're in watching your CapEx, your capital expense, and your operational expense uh, charges, so. So remember the, one of the slides early on talked about correlation, and what I mean by that is taking all the log events, and so this, uh, this graphic is depicted on the left-hand side taking, it could be, you know, one box, it could be a UTM or next generation firewall, or it could be we have clients that have 10, 15 security devices on the left-hand side, taking all the logs and all the events that are coming from those into our operations center, into what they call a SIM, Security Incident Event Management Software for automation. And then as uh, the gentleman said up front about all the servers as well, taking all the server information on the inside coming up as well. That can be on the you know, network, IDS, internal, et cetera, and feeding that in so we can see an attack that's happening. So why is it important to take all the information between the inside and outside. When we, when, we do, when we do our service, for example, we'll scan and we'll know all the assets. Anything that has an IP address is an asset to us, or a node, it's an asset. So we'll know all that. We'll do a vulnerability scan of everything on the network. So we know the configuration, we know the vulnerabilities of all the IP devices. So we have that put into as threat intelligence into our database. So we have, we have, we have the entire asset inventory of everything that's an IP in the organization. Uh, we also have all the global threat feeds coming in, multiple of them, so we know all the bad sites, or the known bad sites around the world, okay? And we know that the attacks are happening. So someone's doing a port scan on you, that happens all the time, okay? Someone's trying to, you know, uh, jingle your doorbell, jingle your locks to see if they're unlocked, you know, move up and down the, the windows to see if anything's unlocked. Uh, that happens all the time. What you're worried about is a specific targeted attack so you have an attack, let's say, a real simple one. You have an attack that's coming through from the outside wor world that's coming to a Microsoft Windows operating system. 
that happens to be going against a SQL server. You may worry about that if inside you have Windows SQL servers, but let's say you don't. Let's say you have Oracle running on Linux. Okay, well, it's a nice to know you're getting that attack against you, but you don't have that issue on the backside because you don't have Windows and SQL. But let's say you did. Then you can trace the, the attack all the way through the kill chain. If, if you guys ever heard of kill chain before? Okay, so kill chain is a methodology that we follow. We didn't invent it. It comes from the military. It also comes from Lockheed Martin. It's about the, it's a whole process of understanding environmental awareness and re, re, reconnaissance all the way through to the actually delivering attack of something that you know the, the, the bad guys are trying to get to you. And so it's a whole methodology piece that's going on. People love it or hate it type of deal, really. So that's what, what that's what we follow. So anyway, as you look at the attack coming through. As this comes through, it's like so it's Windows SQL, and then, you, and then let's say it was against a certain vulnerable piece of software from Microsoft, because you know everyone knows we're getting patches. I, we all get patches from Microsoft all the time. So you may find, hey, guess what? That that specific version of the Windows OS you have with the SQL Server version that you have was vulnerable, and the attack is getting all the way through. That's a priority one, sev one. You got to know about it. You got to know you got to stop that attack, and you also got to figure out, well, was it a bad site to begin with? Begin with. So block that site. Uh, we also have customers that want to do geo-blocking. Uh, for instance, uh, we onboarded recently an HVAC client. And you guys all know about Target and other ones that people are attacking HVAC uh, systems right to get into the, the retail side of things, as an example. We brought this HVAC customer on, and they had, they had, they had, had a breach uh, from the other side of the world. So what happened was two things. A, first thing we wanted done was geo-blocking. So they, they don't do business outside the United States and Canada. So they were like, we want everything outside the United States and Canada blocked. So we blocked it for them. Okay. The other piece was that when we brought the CEO into our operations center, they had thousands of attempted security breaches every day in their small HVAC provider. They do leasing and they'll you know, do the thing, turn on and off your HVAC systems. Um, and I said, oh, I brought him into the operation center and showed him on the, on the screen, and it was real simple, it was that here's the thousands of things that are going on. I don't care about 999 of them. I only care about one, and it's an, a specific targeted HVAC attack against an HVAC control system you know, to your environment, right? That's the one I worried about. So I showed, him, showed that to him, and he said, you know, so he liked that because we were really watching, we're in tune with what his systems are, with uh, what his business is, and uh, was able to go ahead and block yeah, you know, the different things and report and show him every week uh, reporting. So for for his board that he needs to show. But this is you know right here is analytics, you know high level executive dashboard that all of our clients get. Over here to the left, and then right here is uh, asset reporting. So this goes back to the assets. So like this one here has like 173,000 security events. It sounds like a lot, but if you're getting pinged all the time, it's not. Okay. And then down here, this is what our analysts look at. This is a kill chain methodology. And basically, if you have big blue dots, that's bad. Little blue dots are OK. And you don't want any blue dots. So this one's pretty active here. OK, so our analysts usually see the right-hand side. We only have a, a few customers that actually want to see all the details. Most of them want to see the executive dashboard reporting and maybe a little bit of the details. But we can provide as much details as people want. And again, just uh, what I was talking about, you know, security operations center, you know, staffed, you know, 24 by 7 by 365, uh, minimum of two, per, two, two personnel in the, in the uh, SOC at all times. Usually there's a lot more. But, you know, you've got the guard gates. You ha actually have man guards. And then you have cages. Um, and then the operations center and then biometric access. And then we have redundancy between two different data centers uh, for all of our servers as well. So it's, you know, it's not uh, what you typically would find like in the mid-market as a normal operation center. So like I you know, started off saying real quick, you know, everyone's got a responsibility, both business-wise and personally, uh, on the internet. And so that uh, hopefully you can see what uh, you know, Neovera brings to the table uh, with all this from a cybersecurity management monitoring side. And at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Johan uh, from WatchGuard to go through, and he'll go through, uh, I know, a lot more details, but you'll see a lot of connection points between what I said and what Johan's going to talk about as well.